Hey everyone, this is Raven, straight out of Lavender Town, and today I thought I'd share my top 10 favorite ghost types. As Halloween approaches, I figured why not make something eh, ghost related, so I decided to do a top 10 favorite ghost type Pokemon. Of course, just a quick heads up, this list is my own personal preference of my top 10 favorite ghost types. If you have a list of your own of your favorite 10 ghost types, let me know down below in the comments. Before I list my top 10 favorite ghost types, here are a few honorable mentions, which are Pokemon I didn't feel had strong enough reasons to make the top 10 list, but I felt like they deserved some recognition anyways. So let's go ahead and get them out of the way. Our first pick for honorable mentions goes to Alolan Marowak. Ever since I was a kid, I always thought Marowak had a really cool design and interesting backstory, especially with how it became a hardened and powerful and tempered Pokemon through the travesties it faced as a Cubone with the loss of its mother. Years later, they finally introduced Alolan Marowak, and once I found out that it was part ghost, I was sold on the idea of it. It's funny though, as a kid, I always thought that a Marowak and Cubone should have been part ghost, with the whole, you know, avenging of the loss of its mother, and wearing a skull, and being angry and tempered, but I guess they had other plans. But still, at the end of the day, it's a really great Pokemon, and can do a lot of damage if slept on. Ah, Giratina, the renegade Pokemon. This ghost and dragon type is something I remember seeing for the first time when I was 14. I owned a copy of Pokemon Diamond, and I came across it by accident in the ancient cemetery it was in, and I had no idea that it was a legendary that was really banished for its violence. I never owned a copy of Platinum or owned one or rented one or anything, but I learned later on about the altered form and how it has an origin form also, and that was banished apparently in, in its backstory. And at the end of the day, to me, that stands out a lot and makes it unique as a legendary. Next up on our honorable mentions list is Shed Ninja. This zombie bug is pretty unique in a way. It has a bug and ghost typing, however its stats are absolutely abysmal. I mean, look at its HP. That's nothing to write home about at base 1. However, the thing unique about it is its Wonder Guard ability, which means it only takes damage from hits that would hit it for super effective, as well as Stealth Rock damage, Sandstorm, and if you happen to be able to burn or poison it. That's about it. It can actually cause you a lot of pain and annoyance if the opponent gets a chance to. So just make sure you know what you're doing and possibly be prepared if you can. Our last Pokemon on our honorable mentions list would be Spiritomb. This Pokemon looking at its stats seems to have decent bulk. However, its HP is pretty off-putting still. Aside from that, it has useful immunities from fighting, psychic, and normal type moves, all three of those in fact and a fairly decent support move with moves like will o Wisp and Calm Mind and Taunt. However, aside from that, it's not known for much, but I always thought its design was pretty cool and I felt like the Pokemon itself is still pretty special in a way. In the long run, it can do a lot for you if you make good use of it, and aside from that, its design is pretty cool. It's, you could say, the odd Pokemon. You know, get it? The odd Keystone? No? Okay. Alright, with those Pokemon out of the way, let's move on to number 10. Coming in at number 10 on this list, we have Frostlass. Frostlass is a pretty unique Pokemon in a way, being Ice and Ghost type, and it also comes from only female Snorunts when exposed to a Dawnstone. I'm actually a pretty big fan of Frostlass's design. This Pokemon resembles the Kimono, and will also go after things or Pokemon or even humans that it likes, and once it does, it'll freeze them with a negative 58 degrees breath. Once it does so, it carries it all the way back to its home and puts it on display as decoration. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, this Pokemon doesn't seem like a ghost type, why is it considered one? Well, the Pokedex entry from Pokemon Moon states that the soul of a woman lost in a snowy mountain possessed an icicle, becoming this Pokemon. The food it most relishes is the souls of men. Pokemon Ultra Moon's Pokedex also states, it's said that on nights on terrible blizzards, it comes down to human settlements. If you hear it knocking at your door, do not open it. Does that sound scary enough for you? I think it pretty much merits it being a ghost type. Yeah. Coming in at spot number 9, we have Chandelure. 
And this Pokemon, just as its name may suggest, is a sentient chandelier. There's a lot more to this Pokemon than just being a simple chandelier based Pokemon. The flames it uses don't physically burn you, but instead burn your spirit. After hypnotizing an opponent with the flames, it absorbs the victim's spirits. So yeah, as malevolent as it sounds, it pretty much steals your soul. Not to mention it has a massive 145 base special attack stat, and if used correctly in competitive use, with either boosting moves and substitute, or a choice scarf, it can go to town in the opponent's team, and being a great wall breaker. Coming in at spot number 8, it's Palo Sand. And while this Pokemon may look like a sandcastle a kid made at the beach, it's, well, not exactly so innocent. In fact, let's take a closer look at what his Pokédex says. Oh, it apparently possesses people and controls them to form itself into a larger sandcastle, which is pretty much it evolving. And apparently once it's evolved, the power it has to curse others grows stronger, and beneath it are masses of dried up bones from those whose vitality it has drained. Lovely. But that's not all. Palosan apparently eats small Pokemon and siphons away their vital essence while they're still alive. So yeah, this Pokemon is pretty brutal. Really, the only gripe I have about this Pokemon is that its special defense is a bit lower than I would like it to be, but still, it's pretty cool and I didn't know a sandcastle was a design I needed until I saw it. It's one of those things you didn't expect, but once it shows up, it's like, wow, I gotta have that, I like that. So props to Game Freak for making this design, but can you imagine Spring Break or Summer Break in the Pokemon world with this thing running around? Or it's pre-evolution? Yeah, this is sound like a fun time. Decidueye, the seemingly most popular final evolution of the three starters from Generation 7. It's coming in at spot number 7 and it's a grass and ghost type, which is something many of us didn't expect when we finished the game, or at least played through it the first time. To this day, people still wonder why Decidueye is considered part ghost. But here's something you may or may not have known. It is commonly most associated with the Poyo Owl, as well as the Stilt and Common Barn Owl, which are known in some territories as the Ghost Owl, and the Stilt Owl is actually extinct. Yes, you heard that correctly. Decidueye is partly based off of the Stilt Owl, which is an owl that's extinct. And it's actually a common motif with supernatural and owls going hand in hand together, as bearers of death or disturbed spirits. So it just kind of made sense. Also, the archer element probably came from you know English folklore of the hero Robin Hood. So there you go. You can put it all together, and you pretty much get the Sidewire our Pokemon here. The next Pokemon in spot number six is one I just cannot wait to tell y'all about. Marshadow, who was officially revealed back in April 7th of 2017. The Gloom Dweller Pokemon Marshadow is a mythical Pokemon which has a base stat total of 600, and also being a ghost and fighting type, it's really something none of us really expected. But this thing is powerful. Looking at its stats, we can see that it favors physical attack with speed, both tying in at 125. This thing was fun to use and overused here the few weeks it was out, and available of use before getting banned to Ubers. But it was just easy to go to town on your opponent and just steal stats, with its signature move Spectral Thief, or the upgraded one, Soul Stealing 7 Star Strike. Yeah, that's a tongue twister itself. But this thing was fun to use, and you could just destroy your opponent if they made a wrong move. Next up on our list, and taking number 5, with both hands is the gripper Pokemon itself, Dusknoir. This ghost type Pokemon is evolved from Dusktops when traded with the Reaper Cloth. And if the title Gripper Pokemon doesn't frighten you enough, this Pokemon has an antenna on the top of its head, which gives it radio signals from the world of spirits. And of course, that tells it to capture people and take them there. Supposedly it says it's taking them home, or guiding them, as some entry state, but I'm not sure that's a home I want to go to anytime soon. Design-wise to me, Dusk Noir has always appeared to be like a ghostly cyclops. However, there's a Japanese mythical creature that's a one-eyed mountain dwelling thing called the Yamawawara, and may have also been inspiration for the Pokemon itself. Alternatively, some people believe the Chochin Obake may have also been designed based off of it due to its round shape and single eye. Who knows? I mean, I guess we won't know until someone confirms it from the Pokemon Company or Game Freak, 
But still, I always thought the design is awesome. The fact that it's bulky yet powerful. And it just has a really cool look. It's very respectable in my opinion, design-wise. In fact, if someone were to ask me, I would say that the trio of the Dusko family, Dusko, Dusclops, and Dusk Noir, they really, that whole line of Pokemon has never had a bad evolution or lineup, design-wise. Like, I don't really see any flaws. I like how their Pokemon look, and they're very captivating to look at. Well, for a ghost type. But you get the point. Next up for us in spot number four would be Trevenant. And Trevenant is pretty much a Pokemon I don't really see many people talk about, use, or even mention. It's a Pokemon I pretty much call the Zombie Tree. Of course, I don't refer to Trevenant as a Zombie Tree because I think it's unpopular or whatever. But more so the fact that, well, if you just look at its ability, you'll notice that it has Harvest. And this thing is pretty hard to kill with Harvest if used correctly. Now, it doesn't seem to have the base stats that seem all that great, but with the right moves and setup, and right opportunities and turns, this thing can burn something with will set up Leaf Seed, or Substitute, and it can pretty much stay for hours or days. If you give it a Citrus Berry, or in my case, I prefer a Lum Berry in competitive battles, but it just, I teach it rest, and it just heals itself up and it wakes up the next turn usually, provided you can get your berry back. But it's a pretty nice strategy, see what you can do with it, play around. But I've had so many battles where I've won in the overused tier or underused tier, and people just sleep or underestimate this thing. This is a Pokemon that's, it's not the most powerful, but if used correctly and it has some support, it can really be a pain in your opponent for the end. Now aside from competitive aspects, we can't ignore the fact that Trevenant has some interesting Pokedex entries. Such as the entry from X says that it can control trees at will, and it will trap people who harm the forest so they can never leave. Which doesn't sound too bad, but it imprisons you. Hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about that. But at the same time, that's not all about this Pokemon. This Pokemon is said to be the ghost of the forest, and Trevenant is said to devour anyone that dares ravage the forest. The Pokemon also does not enjoy when lumberjacks show up bringing fire types. Which Trevenant of course hates being weak to fire, as one of his weaknesses. Now, it seems like this Pokemon is not really malevolent. It only does things out of act of aggression when its home is threatened. I mean, would you be too happy if someone tried to destroy your home? I'm pretty sure you'd want to trap or devour them as well, right? Well, figuratively speaking, I guess. Coming in to our number 3 spot, we have a pretty popular pick on this list, or at least it's a popular Pokemon currently. We have the Ghost and Fairy type Mimikyu, which is the Disguise Pokemon. And speaking of Mimikyu's Disguise, we can see that it's actually modeled after Pikachu, who of course is the mascot of Pokemon. The reason why Mimikyu has this Disguise is said to, for one, avoid sunlight, and two, it hopes that the popularity Pikachu has will allow it to make friends with people. So honestly, this Pokemon's pretty lonely, and I feel bad for it. It's said to at least cry sometimes in inside of its disguise. Of course, we have to discuss why it's a ghost type as well, because it doesn't seem very ghostly. Well, apparently, if you see its true form under the rag, or the disguise, a mysterious illness or even a painful death might occur to the person. So pretty much, it has a reason to hide itself, aside from the fact that it wants to make friends with Pikachu's popularity but we don't know what its normal form looks like, and if its identity is exposed, well, it really tries to prevent that. If the neck is broken in disguise, it spends all night patching it up, and then seeks revenge on the one that caused damage to it. So pretty much, it has an important secret to hide up, I guess, or at least its identity to cover up. But at the same time, it's just doing what it can, and what it thinks it can to earn friends, and that's pretty heartfelt, honestly. Slicing into number 2 on our list is Aegislash, and this is a pretty impressive Pokemon. It resembles a golden sword with a blade pointing downwards. However, this Pokemon's special ability is called Stance Change, which allows it to change forms mid-battle. The two forms that Aegislash can go into consist of a blade form and a shield form. 
the Pokemon stats more so flip over, depending on if it's more offensive based or defensive based. Eggslash is said to be able to detect innate qualities of leadership, and legend has it whoever Eggslash recognizes as a worthy leader is destined to become king. This Pokemon has actually served generations of kings, so it's no surprise. Eggslash is also a Pokemon in a King Shield. Eggslash is pretty much a noble Pokemon, it seems. It doesn't really seem to have anything evil about it, or anything that's malevolent or vicious. It doesn't really mention death or dismemberment in any of its Pokédex entries from what I know. And it's a noble Pokemon, as I said. It looks for innate qualities of leadership in people and recognizes him as a worthy leader who is destined to become king. That's pretty cool. This Pokemon has served generations of kings and really, it's respectful. Also, some people like the shiny color of this Pokemon. I actually prefer the gold and lavender myself of the original color, but you know, to each their own. However, uh, this Pokemon still, when it, as far as using it, it was banned pretty quickly, but when it was first available in Gen 6, it required a lot of strategy, and it was very rewarding to be able to use King Show, get off a Swords Dance possibly sweep the opponent's team, or even use a Shadow Ball set with Automatize. Depending on whatever you went for, the Pokemon was pretty useful in its own way. And that's why Aegislash is, has its position on this list. And now, finally, here is number one on this list. You may have seen this coming, actually. Nah, just kidding. You may have seen it coming anyways, but number one is obviously Gengar. I mean, after all, it's the channel mascot, my favorite Pokemon of all time, and of course, my favorite ghost type. Ever since when I was a kid, I've always liked Gengar. The design of it just looks cool to me, the red eyes, the purple body, how it's just mischievous, and also at times malevolent. It's just, it's a classic, and how can you not like the original final evolution of the OG ghost trio? And no, if you're wondering, I'm not a Gen 1-er, but I mean, ever since I was a kid, this Pokemon has just been attached to me as a favorite. How could I not like it? In game use, also, it's just very unpredictable. The moveset it has is absolutely massive as a special attacker, and it has a move that can work for any occasion, just about. I mean, have you seen its moveset? With moves like Trick, Destiny Bond, Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt, Will-O-Wisp, I mean, it has a move that can... It's literally the mix-up Pokemon, basically. Sure, they may have taken away its levitate ability, but you should be able to predict an earthquake. It's not too hard. Oh, and did I also mention that it has a Mega Evolution? Sure, it's banned, and it's ungodly broken, but it's still pretty cool. For the first week that I was able to use it before it got banned for Ubers back in Gen 6. Aside from all that though, let's talk a bit about Gengar's behavior, and how it acts in general from Pokédex entries. Gengar is said to be a bit of a jokester, will play pranks on other people and Pokemon, and is often said to mimic the shadows of people and laugh at their fear and fright. If you feel a sudden chill, Gengar may be close by, and it may be trying to lay a curse on you. Sounds like a fun Pokemon, except for the curse part, and, you know, being chilly. Also, this Pokemon will attack people who get lost in mountains, and is said to be the culprit behind pranks and shadows dancing in the moonlight. So yeah, Gengar pretty much does whatever it wants. I can see it being that one Pokemon that will pull pranks and have a YouTube prank channel that it got arrested for throwing fish at people's faces. Yeah, that's pretty much Gengar. But there's just a lot to like about this Pokemon, and that's why it takes the number one spot in this list. And that's my top 10 list of my favorite ghost type Pokemon. Let me know down below what you would have in your top 10 favorite ghost types in the comment section. I felt like just making a video related to Halloween, so I figured why not ghost types. It was pretty fun. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, if you liked what you saw, leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Sayonara.